Stephen Pressfield says in The War of Art that there's this force called resistance that haunts all creative people. Tells us, what makes you think that you are good enough to write this book, to make this video, to teach this class, to do anything? If we let that voice, that negative voice that I sometimes call our bad wolf, keep us from doing great things, keep us from exposing ourselves, making ourselves vulnerable, then we have not lived a life fully lived, worth our trouble to the level that we can excel. So I encourage you to set aside those negative voices. When those negative thoughts happen in your head, just allow them to pass on through. Remember that anything you say, of course someone can criticize it. I, I don't know of a, a more nitpicky competitive discipline than philosophy. It's what we do. It's the, the collaborative, cooperative pursuit of objective truth. And one of the ways that we get there is by showing one another where we make reasoning mistakes and how we could improve our arguments. Sometimes it's more helpful and more civil than others, but ideally it's a cooperative practice and criticism is provided in a friendly way. So if you receive feedback that's critical on something that you've posted, on a video that you've made, be appreciative that someone cared enough to provide that to you. Of course, you're gonna make yourself vulnerable to internet trolls. That's just a part of the business as well. So what, people that say mean, spiteful things on the internet, that's their problem, not your problem. They're the one that's living a, apparently not a very happy life and not a very fun existence. And so the, the correct attitude to take toward people like that is pity, not, uh, not defensiveness or, or hurt, but instead pity and, and compassion. That could be a higher uh, response to, to that sort of criticism. But don't let it prevent you from, from uh, achieving great things, and especially don't let it prevent you from making good quality philosophy videos. One visual aid I've had some success with lately, I've been experimenting with it, it's, it's worked out well. Giant post-it notes, you can get them at Office Depot, you can get them on Amazon, and I can, I can write visual aids, draw visual aids on the post-it note, and then I'll stick them on the sliding glass door that goes out to my back, back, uh, back porch, and it makes for a nice backdrop. Usually I'll enlist the help of my wife or my son to be the camera person, and they'll zoom in and move around, but it could also work on a tripod. But the benefit of this is that I can read the reading, I can organize my ideas, reorganize my ideas, because usually they don't come out clearly the first time. And then once I figure out what the core concepts are, what I'd like to focus on in the presentation, in the video, I can figure out some key visual aids to use. So for example, this is from chapter three of my Ethics in a Nutshell, and that's the chapter that refutes moral subjectivism, or the view that ethics is similar to personal taste, or similar to which flavor of ice cream is most delicious. And there's a negative argument and a positive argument that the book focuses on. And the negative argument in particular is structurally similar to a common response to the problem of evil. And so here I've got the uh, argument from appreciation and the argument from free will intercepting the problem of evil before it destroys theism. And over here you've got Scott's box of rocks and the smart aliens argument that are intercepting the problem of disagreement before it gets to moral objectivism. You can read the book to figure out what those are or watch the video. You, you can see this in practice actually. But one thing cool about this is that you can put direct quotes on sticky notes or in small text and then during the video, you can zoom in and read the quote and then zoom back out. This is kind of like the Prezi presentation software where you can zoom in on stuff and then back out. It gives you the big picture. And so that's what I'll have my son and my wife do when I'm giving the presentation is if I point at something, that's their key or their cue to come zoom in on that. And then I'll talk about it. Usually they're a better camera person than I am. And then when I'm ready for them to zoom back out, I'll tap them on the shoulder and they'll come back out. The camera can't see that, but they can feel it. Please do not read a script. Reading a script is way too robotic and it looks as if you don't know what you're talking about because you have to have a script. It's a terrible crutch. You do not need it. You're much better than that. It's gonna take some preparation. That's what that know thy material commandment is all about. But if you study your subject, you study the ideas, you figure out the best way to order them, and if they logically flow from one to the next, it'll be easier for you to remember, easier for you to, to deliver, and e easier for your audience to remember, absorb, apply. One thing you can do though is you can put your primary points on a sticky note like this and stick them at the bottom of your camera. And that way when you're providing your presentation, you're delivering, if you happen to lose track, you can just glance down and right back up. No big deal. Here's what that sticky note looked like for Existence Precedes Essence by Jean-Paul Sartre. And when I read a philosophical article or any sort of argument, I'll try to summarize the main points in my own words because I don't want to 
parrot what the author has said because usually this stuff is, is confusing. I want to present it in language that's much easier for me to understand and for my students and my audience to understand. So I'll usually underline very little, try to put stuff in my own words, and then I'll translate that into a notes sheet like this. And so here's all of that article by Sartre on two pages that I typed up and then even include, included my take on the uh, argument. But I don't look at this when I'm actually presenting. I'll look at this when I'm rehearsing, when I'm organizing my ideas. But whenever I present, I'll, this is all I have on the post-it note. And you can see this follows the same structure as the notes, but I've only got one word here for anguish, one word for forlornness, one word for the anguish of Abraham, whereas up here, got a few sentences and such. Also, when I'm reading articles, I think about stuff that I might want to include in the video. In this case, I could tell by, by the time I got to this point that I was going to be critical of the article, but I still wanted to make sure that I praised the guy. So I had a note right there, make sure you praise Asada. This particular article right here, I had the idea to use one of my kids' robots in the video. And so I went ahead and made, made that note. So you should do the same whenever you're, you're reading your stuff. And this I found while I was pulling out this information to show you. This is me in the newspaper giving a Chamber of Commerce presentation, but this is not the best newspaper and I'm kind of beneath the uh, meth bust of the Marlboro Man. Marlboro Man marred with meth. Crystal stashed in trouser pocket. And right down here, Professor Matt, Chamber of Commerce annual meeting. One technical tip is try not to have a really bright background because if you do, you're gonna be very dark. See how easily we can just switch this around. And I've got the sun on my face. That's a little bit too bright, but at least you can see me. Whereas if I've got the sky in the background like this, can't see a thing. Read, first public speaking book by Matt Deaton. Why this title? Because it's best. But I can't speak to crowds, they will give me germs. Read, chapter 12, using technology. Tip one, look at lens, not screen. Look at lens, not screen. Don't be moron.